Hey everybody, we are back again with another wonderful crochet journey. Today we are going to be talking to Miss Bria from Bria Crochets. She is absolutely as sweet as possibly can be. Um, <laughs> and if you've not been here before, my name is Marty. I am the owner of Blossom Stitches Crochet and this is all about the crochet journey. So Bria, tell us a little bit about yourself. For crochet wise, mostly I do markets and I design and sell amigurumi patterns. Also, I love plushies in both the crochet form and in collecting, as you can tell from my background. I love it. I love <laughs> it. Those penguins. Oh my goodness. The, okay. Yeah, these ones are all squishmallows on these shelves. I have quite a few other plushies though in my other room too. Oh wow. Okay. It's it's chaotic, but it's wonderful. It's happiness. Yes. It is happiness. So when did you start crocheting? How old were you? Um, well, actually, I started crocheting at two different points in my life. Um, there was a time when I was around 12 that I'm like, I want to learn how to crochet. And so my mom helped me a little bit with that, but I mostly learned from a book that I got from the library. That wasn't Tom McGroomy at the time. That was just like, you know, standard. Well, I wouldn't say standard, but like, you know, just like square crochet stuff, you know, like bags, not granny yeah. squares though. That was, yeah, but stuff like that. And then the other time, which is more recent, um, it was around the beginning of 2020. I hadn't crocheted in a while, so I had to relearn everything, but I'm like, I found this crochet kit that I had gotten years and years ago, probably when I had first started crocheting. And I finally decided to actually learn how to do amigurumi and the magic circle or magic ring, whatever you want to call it. And I mean, since then, I've been crocheting. The rest is history. So you fell in love with Amigurumi like quickly. Oh yeah. Had you heard of Amigurumi before you did that kit or was that pretty much your introduction? No, that was pretty much the introduction. I, I didn't know much about crocheting plushies at the time. Well, before that. So you have a channel. That you've mm -hmm. had up for a while. How long has you, have you been doing your uh, YouTube channel? Ooh, I started a little while ago. It was probably a couple years ago before I started doing markets. So you did then, your YouTube channel before markets? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. And did you start your channel specifically for your crochet? Or was it yes. kind of a, oh, was it? Yeah, it was for crochet. I wanted to you know, just share the process and talk about crocheting with somebody that, because I don't really know very many people in real life that, well, I say in real life, but like in person that crochet, you know, in my immediate vicinity. So I wanted I to that. be able to talk about it with somebody. <laughs> yes. And have you, how has the crochet community been for you? It's been <laughs> awesome. I've, Especially on Instagram, um, I just like seeing everyone's makes and <laughs> everything they make with my patterns. That's been really fun to get tagged in. Um, YouTube, I'm a little bit, I, I kind of want to, I still want to say that I'm new to YouTube because I actually had stopped uploading for a little while because I was busy with markets. And then I started uploading again because I'm like, I really loved editing videos i know that's a weird thing to say but no i get it i totally get <laughs> it it's fun yeah it's a lot of fun like i don't know it's it's really awesome when you have like the raw footage and just what you can create just by mm -hmm. some simple simple thing i'm not a editing guru by any means <laughs> but um i do find a lot of joy in editing mm -hmm. as well I'm glad that I found somebody else who feels like this. there's a lot of people that are like I don't want to do a YouTube channel because I don't want to do the editing I don't like mm -hmm. it I don't you know what I'm saying so oh yeah really neat to find somebody that also enjoys that yeah it, 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 I don't know it, it, it's interesting just because I I like being able to put out a story through the video even if it's just like this is what I'm going to make. This is me making it. This is it finished. Like, it, it's just yeah. really fun to me. So do you do a lot of tutorials on your No. Channel? 
No, I haven't done any tutorials. Like, if I do any tutorial, it's like a little tiny snippet within my vlog. Like, okay. this is this is how I do this. Or like, if I'm if I need to sew something on, I'm like this. I use knitting needles for this or whatever. Okay. So. See, I like that though, and I. Mm -hmm. I've always been interested in doing like the vlog style crochet videos, but I'm it to be honest, it's kind of it's intimidating for me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was really impressed when I watched your videos. Um, I was really kind of impressed. And I'm actually gonna link Bria's channel in the description below so y'all can go check her out too. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> well yes. not not that you have to if you want to <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely this uh community is very supportive and encouraging so most definitely go check out Bria because yeah I was digging it I was digging it uh Bria so you started crocheting twice and then you started with Amigurumi have you ever looked back like have do you occasionally do things other than Amigurumi or do you pretty much just stick to that? Occasionally I do pick up a personal project. That's like a bigger project. My most recent one was like a hooded cape. So I, cause I've always wanted like a cape or a cloak or whatever. And yeah. I decided to crochet one. So that, oh, wow. I recently finished that. It's really fun. I don't, it, it's somewhere. I need to find it. Actually, okay. I actually know where it is, but I have, I would have to go get it. It's anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I know I watched a video of yours that you were doing like uh hanging plants was that for a market yes. or was that a person that was freaking awesome by the way that's something that I've also wanted to do when I saw that I'm like I should should I I don't know but I like that you use variegate variegated yarn yeah uh for the leaves which I was like that's pretty cool that's variegated yarn I have as you can see I don't have much of because I don't really know how to use it other than mm -hmm. in blankets and things like that so when I saw that that was inspiring for me as I'm sure it may possibly be for other people as well so what mm -hmm. made you think of using the variegated yarn do you use that a lot specifically when it comes to the plants yes I tend to use variegated yarn more often than not for the leaves just because I feel like it looks, it, it gives it more dimension and it looks more natural because leaves aren't just one solid color. They have like True. more yellow parts and more darker green parts and they have the neutral green parts, not neutral, but like <laughs> leafy green. I, yeah, um, I, I used to, well, I still do, but I illustrate a lot. And part of that learning how to do that was a lot of color theory and shading and lighting and so I try to include that as much as I can with crochet. So have you done, and this is one of those random questions that just popped to the top of my head. Have you done a color theory type video for your channel? No, no, I haven't. That's, you a good know, idea. that's something that I struggle. I really struggle with colors and what colors are going to complement and which ones are going to like, I really have issues with color. Like, mm. I, I know, say, if I want my main project to be pink, right? There are so many shades of pink that not all colors, even if you want to do pink and yellow, not every yellow is going to match with that, with that pink. And so, and that's why it made me think, oh, did you have that? Because I would totally watch that. <laughs> color theory is something that I really, I really struggle with that. And there's several of us that, that really struggle with that. So, I mean, just, just an idea. <laughs> I mean, I could. That is a very yeah. good idea. It is. It is. And I think with, just from what I've seen on your channel, Bria, dang. <laughs> you got it going on, girl. You do. You really, truly do. Where you started twice, is there something that, or any kind of advice that you would have for people that are just learning or are having a difficult time? Well, one thing is probably just to be patient with yourself. You're not going to know everything all at once. 
So just take it one step at a time. Like if you want to make an amigurumi, first you try to learn how to do the magic ring. And after that, you build on to that with first, it's probably good to get your tension down because that that's really hard too. Um, yes. uh, how to do increases, how to do single crochets. I mean, like if, for example, you come across another stitch that's in that pattern, you look that up, you learn how to do that really well, or at least as good as it's going to get for that project. So just be patient with yourself. It, it's really hard at first and it, it gets easier. It does. Did you ever have a, a, I don't know, like a light bulb moment when you were like struggling, struggling, and then when it all just kind of clicked and you were like, did you ever have <laughs> a moment like that? Like, how did I not get this? Like one recently, actually, um, really? I was, I was watching someone else and I, I don't remember the channel, but anyway, I was watching something and they were like, if you're having a hard time with your magic ring and pulling it tight you might want to loosen your tension for the stitches that you put into the magic ring and i'm like what <laughs> and so i but i tried it i'm like what what this actually works how how have i not known this before so it, it like tightens way more like because i don't even know how to describe it but when you're pulling the magic ring tight there's like this point that it stops but if you I found that if you loosely crochet into the magic ring, it pulls even further. So that it doesn't break your yarn. I've had that happen with me. Like it, it's not like pulling tight all the way. So I yank on it some more mm -hmm. and my yarn breaks and then I'm screwed. I got to start <laughs> all over. <laughs> yes. I mean, you don't want to be, you don't want to pull on it too tight because it will still break, but it, it, it pulls easier. It, it's really hard to describe, but. If you're having a hard time with your magic rings, crocheting into it loosely, then again, I'm a pretty tight crocheter, so so Same. it could just be me. Have you noticed a difference in how you control your tension depending on the type of yarn that you use? Ooh, depending on the type of yarn I use? No, no, I don't think so. I'm, I I feel like I have a pretty consistent tension, at least from project to project in like the same week. Over time, I've loosened my tension, mostly because of wrist issues I was having at some point in my life. Just, you know, being an artist and crocheting, it was it was really rough on my wrist. So right. <laughs> um, so over time, I stopped crocheting as loose, sorry, as tightly and started crocheting more loose. And obviously, I I am. Um, made my hook size smaller that I was using, but yeah, but from project to project, I don't think I crochet with different tensions. Hmm. I haven't thought about that actually. Okay. Well, what about I, you? yeah, I've, I've never had to, <clears throat> I've really only used the, the worsted weight. I've mm. never tried the, plushy or you know anything like that um the bulkier yarns I, i've mm -hmm. tried with the smaller thinner yarns but i have to double it up oh yeah and, which is you know why i was asking uh, yeah you for me it's mostly yarn? just hook size yeah most of it that i do is plush yarn depending on the project though because like for the plants i usually use worsted acrylic for plushies i generally use like size six blanket yarn. Okay. But obviously different hook sizes for each one. Now you mentioned earlier that you loosened your tension, um, but then you went down a hook size. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and that eliminated, because I, I don't know. And correct me if I'm wrong, because you, mm -hmm. you've been crocheting longer than I have. I was under the assumption that when you went down, a uh, uh, a hook size that it actually made the stitches tighter yes that is the case it, it was basically just to even out the fact that i was loosening my tension so if i loosened my tension and kept the same hook size it would definitely have like a looser feel but because i was loosening my tension and going down a hook size it kind of counteracted the fact that it would have like looser stitches 
Okay, if, so it if, and it still helps your sense. wrist. I I think it does. I think it does. So what when you did that? Because I know you had mentioned your wrist issues, mm. um, and I've heard that from a lot of people when you oh know, yeah, random squirrel moment. Are you a a knife or a pencil? Knife grip. Yes. You're yes. a knife grip. Okay. Mm-hmm. So. When you loosen your stitches, even though you go down, it still helps your your wrist. Yeah, I've never had a problem with like different hook sizes giving me different issues for my wrist. It's only been the fact that I was crocheting really tightly. Okay. Yeah. Just because like I've held everything for on for dear life. <laughs> now, are there any, I guess, lessons that you've learned through crochet? Um that you can also like apply to other areas of your life just enjoy what you're doing in the moment sort of because something that has really influenced me in both like the art side of stuff and in the crochet side of stuff you can't compare yourself to where you are now to someone else's journey in other words don't compare your worst to someone else's best because usually for example, social media, everyone's posting what they do with the best possible outcome. Everything you see, well, almost everything on social media, it's generally the best thing that they've made or like the best outcome. And if you're comparing that to where you are, like in a really hard moment, or like if you're struggling at the time and you're comparing your worst to, to their best, it's not going to do you any favors. It's defeating. Mm -hmm. It's defeating. And it's really easy to do. Are you your own worst critic? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm really hard on myself. It's it's not a good time. (laughs) No, no, it's not. No, it's not. Oh, that's really good advice. That is really, really good advice. It with the role that social media plays in literally anything. Mm -hmm. Um, especially if you're on social media because you want to learn how to crochet or you want to learn how to do a certain project or you're looking for inspiration. It's really that self-doubt really does kick in. So I'm so glad, so glad that you brought that up. It's Mm -hmm. hard not to do that. So what do you do? Have you found yourself doing that? And if you do, what what do you do to counteract that? Oftentimes what I do is I take a step back from what I'm doing in the moment, like if I'm working on a project that I'm struggling with, and I look back at stuff that I made like a year ago, or or just even a month ago, or whatever, and just look at the progress I've made, just to kind of put in perspective where I am now. I, that's why I keep a lot of my really early projects, just so I can see them and be like, I did not do that right at all. I know that now. And I have very much improved. So is there, like, how do you catch yourself? Usually when I start comparing myself, it just kind of puts me in a bad mood. Also, if I'm actually trying to make something, I am I start thinking about others instead of what I'm doing. If that makes any sense. Like, it does. That's comparing. Also, instead of taking inspiration, it's more like, well, they did this. They do this better. or I should be more like them because okay. inspiration is awesome. Yeah, that... you, you get so much from other people, but right. when that starts soaking into your self-worth, that does, no. <laughs> that is a huge trigger. That is a huge trigger. And it, and it can happen really fast too. If you ever mm-hmm. find yourself looking at, for inspiration, you're like, oh, that is so awesome, but I'll never be able to do it like that. What made you decide to start your markets? Oh, okay. It initially started because for a couple of reasons, I was getting way too many plushies in my house and I needed to get my space back. Um, Also, I felt like I was ready to share what I was doing because I had like a certain level of quality that I wanted to achieve. I felt like they were up to my standards, even though my standards are always changing. And then also, also, I have really bad social anxiety. Hopefully that's something that other people cannot understand or 
even just relate to. I have a really hard time like talking to people I, whenever I have to go out or talk to people. It's just not a fun time for me. It, it's gotten way better. Um, like I've learned all kinds of different things to go along with that. It's getting way better, but that's partially because of markets. I started doing markets mostly so I could go out and talk to people more. You should really be proud of yourself for that because that that's huge. Um, when you talk about pushing boundaries, mm -hmm. that's a big one. I don't personally leave my house, Bria. I, I don't. <laughs> I, I grocery shop online because the pandemic taught me that I can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but so I feel you on the the social anxiety and pushing past that is is pretty big. I you inspire me, honestly, because like maybe I should just suck it up, buttercup, and get it done. <laughs> Did you always plan on making crochet like a side hustle or a business? Is this your business? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. I, I did not originally think that this was going to be the case. I went to school for animation, but as soon as I got out of school and realized what the industry was like right now, because if you've heard of like all of the writers and actor strikes going on, animation studios just not existing because of the pandemic, um, it, there's a lot going on right now in that industry and it's just incredibly hard to get into because of a lot of competition and a lot of like just really difficult long jobs i i know this isn't related to crochet but it is though mm -hmm. it's okay it is <laughs> you're good but in the meantime i you know started crocheting again well i had started crocheting before i went to school and then after school, I'm like, I'm not doing anything right now because I can't find a job. So I started crocheting even more. I'm like, you know what? I should share these because I really like how they're turning out. So I did that. And it's just kind of grown from there. That's exciting. So it, it your journey didn't start with the end result of having a business in mind. No, no, not at all. It was just something fun for me to do. That's really awesome. It's it's really awesome. I find that um, doing these interviews, I've learned mm -hmm. that very rarely does your crochet journey lead to where you originally thought that it would. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, Bria, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you would like to share? Oh yeah, there was one other thing. <laughs> So when it comes to markets, it has really helped me with all kinds of like socializing stuff, but also it's really helped me with like self-confidence in other ways, because with markets, oh, well, okay. With just doing stuff online, it's a bit of a different vibe than going in person and having someone directly tell you to your face that this is incredible. This is amazing. I absolutely love what you've made. Um, wow. It, it's just a bit of a different vibe than getting a comment on social media because that's like you don't you can't directly see that person you have no idea it, and it just there's that disconnect yeah wow i can see how that would be i can see how that would be pretty huge being able to see somebody because like it i don't know everything seems so and i'm all for positivity i am mm -hmm. But I also find with social media that it's hyper positive. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Do you see what I'm saying? So I know there yeah. have been times that I see, uh, wow, that's great. And I'm thinking, is it really? Because you can't yeah. see the person. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I can definitely see how that would be a, a, a confidence boost. Like, wow, they really do mean it. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah, and so it a lot of time with social media comments, I'm like, this feels a little bit copy and paste, which I, I absolutely love and appreciate every comment I get. It's That's just right. really hard after a while to take it as an actual compliment instead of just a copy and paste, copy and paste. Right. Do you sell online as well? 
No, uh, not my plushies. I do have some patterns. Okay. Which have been really fun to do and create, but shipping with Canada is brutal. Ouch, so I'll I, bet. I really do not want to have to get into that yet. Maybe I in the future. That. I feel that. Do, do you sell on Etsy or? Uh, there's a few different sites that I sell on, like Etsy, one of them, Ko-Fi, it, or however you pronounce it, Coffee. And Rippler. I was doing Rippler, too. Rippler. Yeah. Maria, thank you so very much for joining me today and for sharing your story, bits and pieces of the lessons that you've learned and the ways it, that have your life has improved. Um, my brain is glitching again. Uh, <laughs> the ways that your life has improved because of the crochet, even though it's not just about the crochet, Crochet mm -hmm. really is life. Like it intermixes <laughs> and it mingles with like, that sounds really cliche. I know crochet is life. Well, it is <laughs> because it enhances every other aspect of your life too. Mm -hmm. um, and I just really want to say thank you for joining me today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's been really fun to talk to someone. All right. Now, if you guys want to go visit um, her channel, it's going to be in the link in the description below as well as um the other links if you want to go check out her um original patterns bye now